Hello, you all. Spooktator Bob here, and uh, I have a particular method that's actually been well experienced. I don't want to say tested because uh, more tested is wrong because I actually learned of it while experiencing the situation. I have a method I think may help for maybe spotting ghosts in the dark and. I know this because of the experience that a friend and I went through. Now, you're going to need a, a lighter or matches, something like that. And all you're going to need else is a candle, like right here. That one's used. <clears throat> and uh, I can't experiment with this camera. It's not very good for the dark so I can only explain my story. Unfortunately I don't have the equipment right now in my life to be able to provide a better observation for you. So please forgive me. Anyway, here's the story. In my uh home county of Estill in Kentucky. An old road down there. That's a big old house that was uh is it was used for uh, slave ownership uh was a plantation there's a lot of uh slavery things happening in that area you have another civil war stuff things going on in nearby counties things like that the railroad runs through there there's a river close by you know, the kentucky river in fact and uh, uh i've known numerous people that lived in that home uh the homeowner who's now passed away uh would rent that home out people to live in and um, everybody I've known that's, that stayed in the house and rented it for a time have had terrible fear of the house talking about seeing ghosts in there shadow beings stuff like that uh, the house is big enough one guy I know personally on him for many many years got lost in the house and um, like uh, the girl named Amber I know uh, her first night in the house, her husband was uh, gone with time. Uh, she called our home. I had to go down there and sit with her till her husband got back, which he wasn't appreciative of some guy. You know, well, I mean, they know me, but us being there alone together, but quite simply, she was scared. Uh, she said the beings, the shadow beings, were peeking in on through her through the doorway to keep on watching her. She said it was very weird. They didn't live in the house very long. It uh, wasn't very long he figured out why I was there and I was more appreciative later. Anyway, uh, a Stanford bunch I knew, uh, they lived there. <laughs> the one of them swore, I never seen a little boy, one of them swore a little boy was haunting the place, was after him. And another guy I know named Gary, he was the last one I know to have lived in that house. Uh, I stayed with her with him overnight before. He got a dog for a reason. He had he. It's like you want a dog because simply got a dog to alert him. The one upstairs room was filled with these little old, you ever seen the little uh, balls and those like pools and everything? You jump in the balls and kind of swim around on them, kind of, you know, like the circus stuff or, you know, carnivals, festivals, things like that. The room was filled with those little balls. We had many ball fights in that room. And that was upstairs. You're down there at night and no sleep in the living room on the couch. You hear those balls. Little by little, and once in a while you hear them get splashed or something's up there. We didn't go up there at night and check it out, by the way. But, uh, you hear those balls roll down the hallway there, the long walkway, and roll down the steps. You didn't get up and check anything out. Next morning you get back up and we're going to look around. There was no balls to be found them downstairs. You know, you heard them, the little by little, one by one, roll down the Roll down the steps and that, you, know, you can hear that sound, you know, balls going down step, dun, 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 step by step. You hear it, there's some mistake, but you know what the sound is. Anyway, Gary left the home. His younger brother and I were running around one night. And uh, just shortly after Gary left, and he wanted to go down there to see if uh, Gary had left any uh, anything back, anything important, which went to the home. No one was living there at the moment. Electricity, well, the power to the place was shut down, but the uh, security light was still on. 
And this home's huge. The, the ceilings were 15 foot in height. It's not a normal home, you know, over here. I mean, no, it's kind of angled, but it's not like, you no, know, 8 feet. I think that's 10 feet over there. I mean, they, uh, well, it's not considered a mobile home now because it's on permanent foundation, but anyway, those ceilings are 15 feet. Very big. And, uh, we sit in the room, but you know, uh, if you're at the end of the living room, there's two windows on the other opposite end. We're talking about a good 20 feet or further. I can't remember exactly how big the room is. It's big. It's a big room. It's a big living room. 15 feet high, I don't know, 20, 25 feet in length. Huge. And, uh, we're sitting there. Oh, there's a wall. See right here. No, I'm on the other end. Kind of like what I have now. Wall right here. No, over there to my right would have been a door that's not there in my home here, but I remember there was a, a long coffee table in front of us to reserve our flashlight batteries. We lit a candle to sort through the mail that was on the table. And as Max went through the mail, wasn't my mail, it was their mail. As you going through to see what was important and what was not, I look up to the left in front of the a left window from my perspective left window I see the shadow there for the moment I'm thinking somebody was outside the window the security light was beaming in and, but as I kind of focused around a little bit and moved I could tell the shadow angle was not moving correctly and whatever the shadow was I was seeing was inside the room with us because you know when you got a 3D look as you move things start moving out of out of shape and uh, I realized then that they know there's a shadow being sitting in front of us. Nobody's still not wanting to believe it. It's got me kind of thrown off. And I tell my friend, knows, hey man, is that a ghost? And he looks up and says, no man, that's our shadow from the candle. I was like, dude, the candle is in front of us. Catching our shadows behind us. That is a shadow standing in the room over there. And I just remember him, just seeing him just kind of, Look up and just I mean, literally watch his draw his his jaw just you no know, drop open like literally that's why he done he his jaw literally just drops open as he realizes what he has seen so I take my flashlight and shine on it and it disappears turn the flashlight back off it's still standing there and I experimented a couple of times you know notice the artificial light made it disappear but was visible in the candle light. It was still standing in front of that window way. So I turned my flashlight back on, not directly on it, and it disappears. I tell my friend, blow out the candle. He blows out the candle, can't see it. I turn my light off in front of that window again, it's gone. Light the candle back up, and we don't see it no more. So I'm thinking candles, natural lighting, flames, things like that, may, I don't know how the lighting spectrum works. But it may be easier to spot things like that than in artificial lighting. Now, I'm not an expert in lights. I don't know how these things work. But I understand there are different spectrums to lights. There's infrared, things like that. And so as I have known this for many years, I mean, this has been, I mean, this was 90s. This has been, I don't know, 21, 22 years ago, 23 maybe. I don't remember exactly how long it's been. But, um. No, it'd be 20 years. It was about 99. Because we had that band practice. I used to, be in a, I used to play, performing a band. It was about 99. About 20 years. So, that was going on. And I'm thinking that uh, candles may have a way of seeing stuff. So I call it the uh, Spooktator Bob method because I seem to be the only person in the world that's ever mentioned this. My friend was there, but he never mentioned it either. I don't think he caught on to the notion that we were seeing it in candlelight. Not artificial. So I dub that the uh, I'll get that spit out here in a minute. I dub that the spectator Bob method. I'm thinking candles help us to see things that we wouldn't normally see. I'm talking about spiritually. So when anybody wants to use that, all I do is ask you, please refer to it as the spectator Bob method, so I get credited for what I know. Thank you very much.